What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So I've got a lot on tap today and a lot of tips to give, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and give you all the timestamps right here. In that way, you can come back and skip ahead to watch the part of the video that means the most to you. Of course, I'd encourage you to watch the entire video just for fun, blue skies and sunshine, and then ask that you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And with that, let's get right into the video. So while I would love to talk to you about that domination that's going on right there, we're gonna have to save that probably for another week here because this right here is Floritam St. Augustine grass and this video is not about that. This video is gonna be actually all about zoysia grass. I've been living with it now for 18 months and I've learned a lot in that time and I wanna pass on some of the things that I've learned to you guys. And so if you're considering zoysia for your lawn, hopefully these tips will be helpful to you and making your decision. Now while we head over there, there I've got about 2,000 square feet of Empire Zoysia. And that's the whole thing. I've never worked with any other Zoysia besides the Empire Zoysia, but I'm going to assume that they're all pretty much on par or similar, especially if you're getting one of the newer varieties that's been cultivated and kind of worked on a little bit. What you should do is do a little bit of research because every variety has little certain things that it does better than others. Some have a different color, some do better a little further north and a little further south. But in case you want to get the exact one I have, here's the graphic that they use to show you where the best places are to grow Empire Zoysia. And don't forget, I'm down over by here just south of Tampa Bay over by here in Florida and the Zoysia does great here and in fact more and more people are putting it in every single day I see it all over the place and so without further ado let me show you my Zoysia after I've been living with her for 18 months oh sorry hold on I think that's nuts edge so here's my zoysia and uh, as you can see just fluffy beautiful look at this got a little little seed head coming up right here but you know we are in the winter what hold on i can't hear you what are you saying no speak up i can't hear you oh no hold on y'all hold on no it's fine I know I didn't give you a chance to prepare. I, I know that. No, I, I know you're shaggy right now and you're not picked up and cleaned up, but I mean, you look beautiful just as you are. No, you don't, you don't need to be so perfect. All Trust me, they're not going to notice anyway. Nobody's going to, only you notice. E, one hour later. Oh, come on, really? <sighs> no, I turned the camera off. Listen, you look fine. You do. I, I realize the disease scars are still there. We don't need to try to mask that. I don't need to paint you blue. Scars are terms of endearment. They show that you're strong and they show what you've been through, especially when I show the folks how you grow through those scars. I'm sorry I'm catching you at a bad time, but okay. Okay, so now that we're all good here, and yes, this is not the prime time for zoysia grass, which is one of the drawbacks. This is not actually about drawbacks. This is about the top 10 things, the top five things that I love about zoysia. But one of the drawbacks to it is it doesn't like cold. So it slows down in the winter, even here in what's considered Southwest Florida, you know, we'll get into the forties and you can see it stayed green. However, there are lawns in here that were cut. I've let this grow. This hasn't been cut in over two weeks now. And because I've let it grow, it's held its color. But if I would have cut it just before the cold snap, it would have got it and it would have stopped growing and it probably wouldn't start growing again until mid-March. But because I've let it grow long, again, I've let her grow a little fluffy and she doesn't necessarily like that. In fact, she doesn't like it at all, but at least it keeps her green puffy color all during the winter. So this brings me to the first reason why I really like Zoysia and that is the color. Some would call it an emerald green. I would call it a deep emerald green, but it responds really well to fertilizer, especially if you bomb it hard with nitrogen. I even applied one and a half pounds per thousand on an app in the very late spring and got excellent results and beautiful color that lasted for a long time. One of the advantages with the slightly slower growth habit of the zoysia is that it does tend to hold its color deeper, darker, and longer. 
Now the second reason that I really like Zoysia is because of the flexibility in the mowing heights. Now I've got it here right at about three inches, which is kind of the max where you want to be, even though some people mow it up at four inches or even a little bit higher, and they do have success, even though they might be adding some challenges to themselves at that height, but it can be done for sure. But then there's also people that mow all the way down as low as one eighth of an inch and use a real mower. Zoysia really does best at two inches or just under that, but you can flex either way, and I even flex during different times of the year. And just to compare and contrast with St. Augustine grass, there's a lot of those that say you can mow those at three inches but I can tell you once it gets thick and the stolen start dancing we call that the stolen dance you're gonna have to mow most varieties of St. Augustine at four inches or higher as high as you can go jack it up all the way and you're stuck there you can't go lower for life having flexibility in the mow height is also a good thing because if you happen to miss a mow you've got plenty of wiggle room there to make it up later on Now the next reason that I really like Zoysia, and this kind of relates to number five coming up here a little bit later on, is for its ability to self-heal. In other words, when you get a bare spot, it can really take it over pretty quick when you compare it comparatively speaking to other types of grass. Some of you will remember up here, I had to do some drainage back right about the time I had the sod put in, so about 18 months ago. By the way, we'll revisit this if you guys want to, but anyway, I had to put in some drainage because this stuff would be underwater. Like after every rainstorm, you can see it's bone dry in there now couple two tree frogs here and there but this has been working fine and then I got it draining out here but what's interesting is I have a pop-up bubbler somewhere right in here and as you can see or not see it's not visible now I was poking around and didn't film and I found it there it is right there Look at those roots, John Perry. Here, this is a great way to illustrate it. I have a video I've been talking a lot about that I did on the podcast, Lawns Across America, where I talk about growth, grass types and growth habits. You should check that out. I'll link in the description below. Zoysia is a rhizonymous grass, as well as it's a stoloniferous grass. And uh, you can see what they do is it creeps just under the soil surface. And every once in a while, it kind of sends up a flare, sends up a, like a, kind of sends up a test and hey, and if it pops ground, then all of a sudden now it can start producing more grass blades. And you can see that as you have a bunch of these doing that, all kind of sending up these signal flares saying, hey, see some daylight? Yeah, man, throw out some new grass blades. You can see how that could really start to take ground pretty quick. The next reason that I really like Zoysia is it's great barefoot grass. I've said that many times. It is just wonderful under your feet at any height. Now, one thing though, it's not gonna be as soft as Kentucky bluegrass, but it's definitely softer than St. Augustine grass, Bahia grass. I bet it even rivals some of the newer hybrid Bermuda grasses when it comes to feeling good under your feet. And the final reason that I really like Zoysia grass so much is because of rear naked choke. I don't know if that was gonna turn out, but maybe Eddie Bravo twister. It's some sort of MMA move that this grass puts on weeds and other grasses, it just grips and just grips and rips and jumps. That's what it does. But yet so soft and gentle and beautiful and calming. The thing about it is this area of the lawn used to be 80% wild Bermuda. And while I do find it in here, in some places like right here, it's definitely not taking over. And in fact, I would say less than 5% Bermuda here throughout. I do however find it on the edges like this where it's running for its life trying to escape looking for air because it's getting choked by the zoysia here. But throughout the main course of the lawn, I don't see it. now. The other thing is the nut sedge. There is a lot of nut sedge in here, or, well, this is Kalinga, but I'm telling you, the Zoysia does a good job choking it out. I still do need to use some product in here. Probably have to use some Pennant Magnum this year, but while it's not keeping out the Kalinga completely, it is definitely battling it and it is winning the battle. As far as broadleaf goes, I bet you I could find maybe one. Here you go. What is this, Carolina geranium or something? But other than that, 
Look at those roots, John Perry. Other than that though, it just no broadleaf. So the other invader that I've had problems with over here is torpedo grass. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I see it here. This is torpedo grass coming in here, sneaking around the beds. And this is another one of those rhizomatous grasses. You can see, look at those. That's all creeping from underground. If I peel this up, there's all kinds of these. And then see, they're just fine. The rhizomes creep underneath. They find an opening and they pop up. But when you come out here into the lawn, it's really hard to find any of that torpedo grass growing anywhere. I just, I don't see it. And so what I think is happening is it's just continuing to creep underneath. And every time it tries to come up through this thick grass, it says, nope, don't do that. We'll just keep creeping, keep creeping until it gets over here. And then it gets all the way over here and finds a little opening next to the palm tree over by there. And I really do. I believe the zoysia makes such a dense mat that it just keeps that out. So not something I'd put on a guarantee, but it is something I have noticed in the last several months here. Now, at the risk of sounding like a St. Augustine hater, I just want to remind you guys, in the words of that great American philosopher, Stephen Stills, you've got to love the one you're with. And right now, I'm loving my St. Aug, but this time cutter, as you'll see, I really just end up driving it around a lot, all over the place, because I love it, and I enjoy it. I might be tearing up my grass a little bit, but I gotta tell you, I get out on that thing and I just can't stop. Enjoy the Mows reached a new level. Pretty soon I'll have a review on this bad boy, but I've got to learn it a little bit better first, and I want to be able to take you through my entire learning curve here because let me tell you, it's been steep. In fact, you know what? Here's a preview. Here's the first lesson I learned, and it cost me 32 bucks and some added time. One hour later. Um, learning curve number two, I guess. Um, I'm pretty sure my battery's dead here because I left the because I left the key in this mode here, which I don't know what that means. Does that mean it's pumping oil or something? Either way, it's doing something that's making the battery have to work, and it's probably been sitting like that for a week. So now we have a dead battery. Okay, so $32 later, and I got a new battery. Now, one thing is, just in case you know, if you've never done this, take your old battery to the auto parts store because it'll save you the core charge, which in my case was $10. And what the core charge is, is it's the charge for the actual housing and all of that stuff. But what it really is, is it's just a way to ensure that these batteries get properly recycled. So make sure you take your old battery in and save the 10 bucks. All right, y'all, well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of footage from Lawn Ecology this year, as well as link below to Jake the Lawn Kid's channel because he took a ton more footage than I did, and he's got some really cool things going on that he's gonna be doing this year, along with Green County Fertilizer that I'm sure he's gonna want you to hear. So with that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.
You know your camera points, so it gets it gets easier. Yeah. But I can't do it. If I don't have a camera out there, I'm afraid I'm gonna miss something or something's gonna happen that I won't catch on the video. So in that regard, I'll do it forever. But if the grass is not growing, then then what you do is you end up suffocating it because it has no energy to push through. So it needs to be hot. This is zoysia, and it right. wants to grow when it's really, really hot. So we need heat, and we need to pack in the nitrogen. So that's our goal now in the beginning, is we're going to get the current soil here healthy. We're going to put in some soil amendments, uh, humic acid, which is a, a chelator and carbon source, and then fertilizer. That's what we're going to do at first.